Hello. Now, back in the day, in about, I've got to get the date off this book, if I can find it, in 2000, there wasn't much reference material about the Soviet come Russian Army, Navy, Air Force, <clears throat> but there was a lot of the military surfacing. And um, one of the better books that came along back in 2000, as I've mentioned in the In Colour Photograph series of books, if you're watching these in sequence, is this one. Soviet uniforms and military, 1917 to 1919, in colour photographs by the Kesey, published by Crowd Press back in 2000. Now, not really worth the asking price. It's a good book, but it isn't worth the, now this was back in 2000, £29.95 it was, nearly $50 US, and it's only that, about that, but back in 2000, not that much information about since the advent of the internet as it's got good you could probably now get this information off the internet for nothing but it is a, it is a good book but whether it's worth you sourcing it out when you can get the information on the internet i don't know but uh we'll have a look through this i got this it's been well well hammered by me because as i say for a few years this was the only information i had couldn't get it anywhere else but the stuff was surfacing from the former East Germany and uh, in among all the the post-war Russian stuff that nobody knew what they were there was some quite interesting World War II bits and pieces and again nobody knew what they were so in the surplus shops you could get a whole mass of Russian stuff that had just came in from the collapsed Soviet Union and in among it if you knew what you were looking for you could find the really good World War II stuff or the World War I stuff or the white Russian stuff because it used to come in all, all in the lot and used to sift through it. But uh, this was one of the better books on the market at that time. Now, it's probably been, where, where I've said in previous videos that books from the 60s to do with military collecting have been overtaken by better books. This is probably now being absolutely hammered by what you can find on the internet. So, it is a decent one for your bookshelf, but whether it's still this expensive price I don't know whether it's worth you spending that much I personally don't think it is so we'll put it down there we'll have a look through it you can determine whether or not you want to copy and again it's the same thing models period items dressed up this is the front side back and we describe all the bits and pieces so we'll put it on the chair we'll have a look through it and see what's what as I said this was really the only decent reference that was available in the UK at the time. So we've got Soviet uniforms and military, 1917, 1991 in colour photographs by this Laszlo Bikisi. Again, it's a Crowwood Press publication and an expensive 29.95. That was back in 2000. And this particular volume covers Ministry of Defence of the USSR, Red Army, Navy, Naval Infantry, Air Force and Paratroopers. And as we see, it's got, we'll start then, we'll just have a flick through. It's got the paratrooper sniper in Afghanistan, that's where it finishes at. And it comes backwards through all the equipment and it, it describes it. So all, all of this stuff now, this post-war Russian stuff, you can pick it up on the net as surplus for next to nothing. Especially the uh, the uh, the service medals. For X amount of service in the armed forces. Like, I mean, this sort of stuff. This, this goes for next to nothing on the internet. But if you have a book that tells you what they are. They can be bought quite cheaply. On the likes of eBay. So you've got the Russian Navy. The fleet. Military police. The AK bayonets. And again, what it does, it takes, it takes a uniform. And it makes a, an, an area. So you've got a, a seaman, naval Baltic fleet. So that's the naval Baltic fleet guy. And rather interestingly, although they have all this equipment on shore, they don't actually have, which is a shame, an example of a Nagant sniper rifle. That's the regular rifle with the straight out bolt. The sniper rifle, the sniper rifle has a curved bolt. 
which obviously that one isn't, and that one isn't neither. And also, unfortunately, in the, wherever it's at, I need to find it, it's probably in the World War II section, just bear with me a second. Rather disappointingly, in this book, if I can find her, is a sniper set up. Now if you look, woman sniper, 1944, and it goes through all the description, but unfortunately, the rifle that she's got is a regular infantry rifle with a straight out bolt and the sniper's sight, she's physically holding the sight in her hand. The sight isn't actually connected to the gun because it's not a sniper rifle. It's a regular bolt action Nagant rifle, infantry rifle. But unfortunately, it doesn't actually say that in the text. So, so, that, so that's one big fault with the book. What's purported to be a proper sniper rifle, if you see, it actually isn't. And the model is physically holding the sniper sight and it's not even connected to the gun. So that's one of its faults. But other than that, it's useful for interior of hats the various hats again you can buy them as surplus on ebay they're not expensive shoulder boards you can get them for next to nothing and again if people don't know what they, what they are they don't buy them and these things are really really cheap these are the uh, arm badges nuclear musician things like that you can buy them for absolutely nothing on ebay by the job lot by the bucket lord so a use, useful book not worth the publication price so see if you can source one if you need one through your public library. But by and large it's been overtaken by what's now available on the net. So bye for now.